Yeah, this mic is actually. Very sensitive. It's got some kind of onboard compression and stuff going down, so it's uh, probably what we should have been using the whole time. The whole time. Edutech Guys Radio. Radio.edutechguys.com. The opinions expressed on the site this program are those of participants are not intended to and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any specific educational entity, sponsor, company, state, or government agency. Hey, welcome to Edutech Guys. We're back on the air and we're live coming to you from the Southwest Arkansas Educational Co-op in Hope, Arkansas. I want to thank them and I want to thank Hope Public Schools for giving us the opportunity to do this. I want to go a big shout out to CDWG hey. for allowing us to use, uh, giving us, uh, sponsoring us with uh, microphones. I'm Jeff Madlock. I'm, I'm David Henderson. And Sorry. I'm Greg Moore. <laughs> right. I step all over each other. I didn't, I didn't mean to step on you, man. Stop stepping on me, man. Stop stepping on me. Hey, today's show is about llamas. And we're excited to be here. <laughs> no, no, today's show is not about llamas. Um, today's show is about the K-8 computer science standards in Arkansas. <laughs> Well, partially. Partially about Kate's computer science standards in Arkansas. It's also um, about begging for people to come on the show. Uh, <laughs> please <laughs> sign up for the show. Um, I haven't looked at the at the, the notes for the day. Does anyone have any notes? Oh, great. We do have notes. notes. Thank goodness. I tell you what, I'm going to stop talking for a second. Let David take over. Go ahead. Okay. I'll open my notes. We, there's a couple of things that uh, I threw into the notes. One of them actually ties into the standards that Jeff had mentioned, but we'll get to that in a, in a little bit. Um, just announced, I don't know if it was announced yesterday, announced earlier today, something along those lines, but Google is shutting down their Play for Education store. Um, basically, and, and that's going to happen on or after March 14th, the way Google words things. <laughs> I don't know that Google actually has any definite deadlines Somewhere for anything. Here, uh, they're like, you know, okay. So anyway, on or after March 14th, they're going to kill the Play for Education store. Uh, essentially, the program allows educators to buy apps and push them out to students, much like many MDMs, much like Apple. Okay. Um, now, existing accounts, if you already have a Google Play for Education account, they're going to be honored until the end of life of the devices that you have. So whatever Android tablets that you have, uh, currently enrolled in the Play for Education. Once those reach end of life, then your Play for Education reaches end of life. Um, after, <laughs> on or after March 14th, schools and teachers will no longer be able to buy the Play for Education licenses. Um, basically, Google is turning over that whole MDM side of things um, to third parties. Uh, and they said that the main reason is because that is tied to tablets and not has nothing to do with Chrome apps for Chromebooks. Right. Uh, and they said the the because of the brisk sale of Chromebooks and Chromebooks just absolutely flooding the education market, they're basically steering their ship in a different direction. Right. So. Um, it's going to be, uh, it, I think that's going to be very interesting. I have no idea how many teachers slash districts even participate in Play for Education. So I, I don't know what the ultimate ramifications are. And for that matter, that could very well have played a big part into this. You know, right. given if there are, you know, if there is kind of a limited audience, then right. they, you know, it, it's not really going to be there. Not one of their cash cows, right, for lack of a focuses. better description. So, yeah. So anyway, so that uh, I saw that on TechCrunch or something earlier today. Yeah, yeah. It's kinda, I do believe it came out today. I saw that as well. So yeah, that that kind of jumped out, man. You know, we we like to talk Apple and Google a lot on this oh, show, yeah. so I thought that was kind of a important thing to throw out there. Right. As we that is an along. important thing to, to throw Are we? out there. Are we good? We're good. We're 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 broadcasting. Hey, if you're listening to the show right now, uh, and if you're not listening to the show now, if you're not, uh, if you're listening to the show, if you're listening to radio.edutechguys.com. Hey, check us out on Twitter. Just follow at edutechguys. Uh, if you have any questions or like to uh, know something or ask us to please stop talking, just go to Twitter and uh, hit us up on Twitter. You can also go to the website www.edutechguys.com. Drop down to the bottom of the page, and you'll find a comment section there. Lots of stuff happening, uh, like David said, uh, Google shutting on their play for education, which I don't really think it actually kind of even took off. 
for them at that point. So right. I also understand that, that Google is shutting down uh, their vertical farming experiment, which, uh, yes, they had a... Was that, was that Google or was that Alphabet, or do we even? I'm, I think it was Google. Okay. It was it was started by Google, and I think Alphabet told them to shut it down. I understand. <laughs> shut it down. I understand that the count and the number gang, and Cookie Monster had a problem with that. But that's a whole other company, and we won't talk about that. Here. So. <laughs> but yeah, Google is. It looks like they're ABC, Alphabet, whatever it is. It looks like they're starting to uh, maybe shut down some of their other projects to move forward in some other projects. You know, they uh, they canned uh, Google Glass. Yep. And well, they, they, they took it in they a new did, well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They didn't officially can. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. yeah, they're just taking it into another direction. So that, that makes you wonder, though, you know, with this whole Alphabet thing. Um, and, and I think we even talked about it when, when Alphabet first was announced that, hey, this is going to be the parent company of Google, blah, blah, blah. How, I wonder how fluid Apple, uh, not Apple, how fluid Google is allowed to be under Alphabet. You know, when Google was just Google, right? you heard about all that stuff all the time. Mm. Google's doing this and Google's trying Moonshot this. Programs. And, and then, yeah, exactly. You know, their whole 20% deal. Um, it just seems to me like you don't really hear a lot of that so much anymore. I mean, you know, okay, we've heard self-driving cars. Okay, that's neat. But, you know, so what other, I don't know, and I don't even know, are there other things that Google's even attempting or that, that that's been the, made even remotely leaked publicly or outright publicly since they've been under Alphabet that's kind of a new, ooh, ah, hey, this is cool. Right. And, and I don't know, I just, you, I, I wonder if Alphabet is going to be much more focused on that bottom line and so they're just going to, you know, hack and slash the stuff that's, as far as I truly so not far, turning some kind I think, of a revenue. I think most of the stuff that they were trying to shift towards Alphabet were these moonshot programs where they're sort of not search related, not necessarily internet related. Make Google the search slash internet king and then move everything else under the Alphabet umbrella for their, I think they had some genetic engineering projects and all ah, sorts of stuff that okay. was also going on under there. So I think that was That's sort cool. of their general idea because Google's scope was getting to be, it's like, oh yeah, we do like everything. everything. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. so they were kind of, like I said, vertical farming, which was a real right, thing exactly, they were into. Yeah. So yeah, it's like, yeah. what else are you going to do now, Mr. Google? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Self-driving cars. I mean, I was waiting for the jetpack to get announced. So we had yeah, self-driving right. cars, and then we need, just that's need right. flying cars the and Google jetpacks. Jet done. It's in beta, so when it crashes, it's not there at all. <laughs> On my house. Great. Oh, right. That's right. Indeed. But, wow, yeah. So uh, I'm just uh, – it, it's going to be very inter interesting to see where Alphabet takes those projects um, – and what the tie to Google is going to be for some of those. Right. Uh, you know, I, I assume at some point that Alphabet is going to start coming out with things where the Google logo is either very, very tiny or is non-existent. Right, and say, exactly. this is an Alphabet project. Right, right. You know, like, formerly yeah, known think, as Google. I think that's yeah. kind of the whole idea. It's just to kind of narrow Google's scope back down to what Google actually started to do, you know. Right, so. yeah. Pull in the reins on Just their original, on their. Uh, Just a bit, because everybody seems to be branching out. To, I mean, Amazon's got Echo, and they, you know, Amazon started as a book company, you know, and yes. then they became the Walmart of the internet, and then you know, then they were suddenly doing server stuff, and now they're trying to get into streaming and media production. Everybody's yes. trying. It's like they're trying to maximize their profits by getting this scope that's so massive that's just they're becoming the all-encompassing brands. I'm frankly, I'm kind of surprised that there hasn't been any sort of like you know, crack down on like, okay, wait a minute now, this is getting monopolistic here. And right. Or, when are we going to hit that point? You know, yes, exactly. Or, or even, you know, it kind of surprises me in a way that even the investors in some of these companies haven't said, okay, this is fun and all and well and good, but really, you know, you guys need to, let's focus on doing what we started out doing really, really well before right. we start, you know, branching out. But, uh, you know, I, by the same token, you know, we've, we've seen that, well, probably, I'm sure, ever since businesses started, right? You, exactly. know, and, you know, we have oil companies who are, you know, raising farms or whatever right. they're doing. And But for a lot of those, though, we, we do see 
where ultimately it's okay. You know, we tried all of this kind of ancillary stuff and we decided we're going to sell off this piece. We're going to sell off right. that piece. So it'll be interesting to see what how much of that also around. happens, you yeah. know, yeah, I mean, with things like, would, you know, Amazon, you know, talking about being the, the Walmart of the internet, you know, now they're actually building brick and mortar stores. Right. I'm like, isn't that counter to what Amazon was originally, <laughs> originally trying started, to do yes, exactly. in the first place? You know, yeah, but, they, you know, they've, they've come to realize, I think, that, you know, if you rely on just UPS, you can only stretch things so far. I mean, they were they were losing huge amounts of money on Prime memberships because even though people are paying a large amount of money for Prime, you know, all the time, shipping costs have continued to go up. Sure. So, you know, then they, get, they have to weigh this whole, okay, where do you stick the distribution centers if they want to do more of their what are they prime foods or or Amazon oh, marketplace right. or whatever right. it is for their grocery shipping you know you can't centralize everything in like one location in the country and get everything distributed right. so you got to have smaller more distributed like tiny you know centers like you know an actual brick and mortar store <laughs> yes, exactly. so you know and as you were saying with the investors and you know why they weren't, aren't questioning this. I think half of this is probably driven by the investors because after you've become the king of a single marketplace, right. well, uh, I, I mean, can see that. you know, what what more can you do to maximize right. profits except sure. to move to another marketplace? Good you know? point. Good point. Yeah, so, I, can, I can see that. That's I would, true. I would actually be more concerned about the investors pushing it into more and more fields and, like you said, watering down the core products to the point where it's like, why are we even using <laughs> these things anymore? <laughs> yes, exactly. I have my Amazon everything and none of it works well. Right? Yes, so, exactly. 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 <laughs> so that's, that, that's my fear, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. And all that started from a Google talk. Yes, exactly. Sorry, Alphabet. Alphabet, Alphabet Google, numbers, Cookie Monster, Google Bet, Sesame A, Street, B, C. So, um, uh, <laughs> hey, on that same note, it's it's interesting. So they're shutting down their oh, funding for education. I think part of that has become also. It's funny because I know we're going to jump into coding and education here in a second. You're but spoiling it. It, it, it was a surprise. It's a surprise. Coding and education. <laughs> but you know, there. But it's interesting. Possibly, it's because although there's lots of talk about uh, Apple, Apple. They've launched into education pretty hardcore in the last six to eight months. Hmm. Sure. And I believe this might be a direct reflection of that happening also. Hmm. Because before Apple was in education, but not really. They, right, right. They were selling some iPads and they were working on helping out getting it easier for us to handle iOS uh, devices and users. Right, but it wasn't, it wasn't designed to it wasn't, be but, an education device. But now they are. You know, now it's, they're, they're in full grin. Yeah. With this bad boy. And so I'm, I'm thinking they're probably, you know, Google sees its place in education. They're going to sell a ton of Chromebooks. Right. They're, we, everyone uses them as their platform. We do. Everyone's going to continue to do that. But, you know, they're all going to see though, that they're on every device anyway. What are they worried about? You know, they're already on every device. Mm -hmm. You know, and as they said today also, um, they released um, another uh, report saying that Google was – Analyzing student data, but <laughs> but not really. There, yeah. Um, in fact, I'll I'll do a quick uh, today. Yeah, there it was I missed it. Google says it tracks personal student data, but not for advertising. Just for uh, so, anything else. So, so, right. so, so we're tracking your data. We're just not going to ship ads to exactly you. But we're right. going to do other stuff with it. <laughs> Shh, don't tell nobody. <laughs> yeah. Mouse. There's a mouse? mouse. I got that off Periscope. Hey, if you want to check us out real quick, uh, head over to Periscope and just look up Edgy Tech Guys. We're on Periscope. Coming to you live from there. Well, um, hello, Periscope. Hello, Periscope. Um, two of you right there. I see you both. Um, so here's an interesting, potentially, maybe, I, I think it is. You guys may think I'm just off my rocker. But anyway. <laughs> we think that's All right, already. So <laughs> here's... I think Google is going to find themselves in a very interesting position, if not already, because, you know, when Apple started with iPads, they were not designed for education. Apple has gotten into education. They were already in other markets. iPads are being used right. you know, in every other possible way and then kind of shoehorned into education and now they're course, embraced in, in it. In many and, other places, you know, they were also shoot in. I mean, aside right, from the original true, intent true. of being used in a living room to, you know, read right. email and that sort of thing, yeah, it was absolutely. pretty much shoot in to just about everything. <laughs> that, that's a good point. You know, as apps got developed, you know, we saw it in medical fields, we oh, see yeah. it in construction, you know, all kinds of things. So where I'm going with this is, from my perspective, 
the Chromebook is the opposite. The Chromebook was developed specifically for students in education. And so what I see the potential issue being beyond education, where where or are we going to see Chromebooks right. in the in the wild? Right. Uh, you know, outside of education. And I think that is really I think that's going to be their toughest thing when Chromebooks play out in education. Because we, where where are they going to like you know, yeah. go? We I, drop stuff just all the time. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah right. No, that's all. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I'd like you to know. throw out that the stuff that makes it in education was never designed for education, and the stuff that is designed for education education is a flash in the pan. Take, mm. take a really good long look at it. Um, and it's really true. Mm -hmm. You're right, the iPad was not designed for education, but education embraced it and found a billion ways to use it. Mm. Hence, that's where it is. Same thing with 3D printers. Yeah. Uh, same thing with projectors. Right. Now, if you jump to the smart board, which was pretty much pretty designed, much. Oh, right. and then it's software, where is it now? going away. Yeah, it, it is. You're right. I, and when you get right to the fact that you, the Chromebook was not necessarily designed for education, but I have a sneaking suspicion at the, uh, on the, uh, the, the, uh, the bullet point list of where it's going to be used most by in the de development area, they knew that education was going to do it. And, and I think when a, when a company sets out to make an education specific device or a, a piece, it, it actually starts to falter because whatever what always happens is is it it is not able to actually morph into an everyday usable piece right and, or, and that's anything works for software or even into another education paradigm you know so often it's right. like designed for like okay this is how you're going to use it and then some new like oh no we're going to go one to one now so then all of a sudden windows went out you know the door right. for whatever reason and then so yeah i agree and then i think what happens is yeah if you design for education if you don't keep up with the the whole okay new silver bullet let's try right. it this way yeah. yeah then it goes away because we're we're fickle like that education was just like oh try this for you right. know five ten years and then something else well you know the company well I, and what's so funny about that in some in some aspects you know now yes. technology generally speaking seems to fall into that category mm. you know education goes down one particular technology path or at least at least in our experience in arkansas right. it certainly has been right you know like you had mentioned you know smart boards holy cow they were everywhere they and then in. you know and, and then equivalents or close right. close enough i would call them yeah, some, districts, you know, right? some districts spent millions on them yes exactly you know and then and now they're falling out of favor for other devices, other things, you know, but then you take a look at some other aspects of education and we're doing the same fracking thing they've been doing since 1892. Yes, you know, exactly. it's just, it's crazy. The stuff that the education latches onto and just will not let go of. Mm -hmm. And then other things that you can't even get it rolled out before they want to change their mind and do something. Yeah, I think the key part is here is, is it, is that just like we said on the, the show that I lost my mind about Chromebooks. Is, is it how how applicable is it once you leave, you know, right? Education. Education. Right. I mean, when you leave twelfth grade, when you leave secondary, and you move into post secondary education, or the real world for a job, how applicable is it? Uh -huh. Why do we still have body shops and shop class uh -huh. and table saws? And you know, why is that still relevant? Why is teaching word and word processing still relevant? Because it is still applicable once you leave here. And there's, you know, I'll say it again. How many kids went? Oh, dear Santa, please bring me a Chromebook. Mm -hmm. You know. That's just it. Well, we were just talking. You bought your daughter a new machine. Right. It's, it's a Chromebook machine, but it's running what? Windows Windows, because she needs the power right. to run a full operating system. Right. Not something that's not applicable, applicable to when she leaves here. Right. Now, yes, can a Chromebook work for a student in college? No, it cannot. Because depending... I think, it, I think it really depends on what field they go to. Very, but, but seriously, it, it cannot. Because the, in, in most post-secondary... Uh, schools at this point, you're going to need to do several things from, uh, my daughter's a dance major, okay? You're not editing audio on a Chromebook. Right. You're not cutting a piece of music up to use right. in a you're dance not, piece. You're not editing video that you have heard dance recital. That's exactly right. I mean, and that's dance. Yeah. I mean, so, yes, if you're going into a field where you're going to write papers, then you're probably going to be okay. If you're going to cut some basic video of you maybe doing some teleconferencing and things like that, you'll be okay. And, and not to say that it, 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 it is a good device if that's all you can afford. 
That is the darn truth. Because it's better you know, than nothing. It's better than nothing, and I, that is the darn truth. It's better than nothing. So, but you know, there's a but that that has to do with the software too. And I mean, I think that's why some of the best testing software that anyone's finding or training software are companies that also train corporate America. That's who is taking over the training software industry. Right. Yeah, you know, we met someone very vital in that, and the company he works for now, um, uh, at, at AESA. Right. Yes. His company makes a wonderful piece of training software for schools, mm -hmm. but they also train the government and they right. train corporate America. Exactly. They make they get the whole. Oh, you're going to use this after. So you know, as they're building stuff for training for the government and corporate America, that they're going. Listen, this is what the kids need when they're working here. Right. So. That, that works out really well. But, yeah, so I know we got off on that hole. But I, that's the thing about when you said that, I wanted to say, you know, I think that Apple's making its move again, and its move in education is going to be pretty dramatic. Mm -hmm. And and it's interesting that we, we just had a meeting. Can, can, well, let's jump into the coding thing. We just, had, we just got through with a, a meeting right before this, uh, right. a teleconference uh, meeting with uh, concerning – the new Arkansas K-8 computer science standards. Right. And how we're going to provide professional development and, you know, PD and all this good stuff for it and how we're going to start helping teachers integrate coding in K-8. to You know, I have a problem with... Well, okay, no, well, hang on a sec, though. Remember, the coding piece is just 7-8. Right, right. Right. Now, the standards are K-8. K-8. Right. right. And there's a little bit of coding in there, although not, not a lot. But 7-8. It's, it's, it's a thin coding? It's a thin coding. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it funny? I, I, guess the the reason, I guess the reason it's bothering me is in 1997, I taught a class called MIDI and Digital Design because there were a handful of students at Hope High School that wanted to get into you know, web page designing and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so as a band director, the, we could create the class and I could teach MIDI in it because sure. I did a lot of stuff with MIDI. So I understood the, you know, at, at that time, which was 20 years ago almost, you know, how this all works. And I had been building web pages in HTML for some time. So at that time, there were very few WYSIWYG editors. There were actually, oh, no, I, yeah. you know, front page was cryptic at best, and <laughs> Go Live was a few other ones. There, Adobe had some stuff out there, but the best way to make a page was HTML. All that to be said, that I had kids in that class that went on to be coders. Mm -hmm. And quickly, within four to five years after that, so you know, by the early t new millennium, the 21st century, they're coding, but in ASPX and, you know, things like that. Sure. And, and it's interesting where we've come to, especially when you look at Apple's new programming language, uh, which is, uh, sorry, Swift. Swift, thank you. I was thinking Swift. 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 <laughs> Swift. Really Swift. But, you know, but interestingly enough, I, I'm not sure why they're so hung up on coding. It's like they're doing this crazy thing. I had a preschool director tell me today it's like they want three and four year olds to jump all of a sudden and do stuff that first graders are doing yeah. and human development does not work that way right for the majority of humans right, right. there right. are steps to achieve that and the same thing goes with coding mm -hmm. and, and i'm happy we have these days of coding and we're we're talking about coding but you know just it, it's the same thing that happened in 1980 with the commodore vic 20 where you made it say your name across the screen a thousand times big deal yeah. right the idea was to get the basics of coding but some people went and type in that and type in that and right. type in that oh, it's, copy oh it's doing it copy paste right i don't know what i did i just did what the piece of paper told me to right do. right now right. there was that one percent probably less than that they went i gotta find out why i did that mm -hmm. i want to know why okay what makes it take those words when i put it in there what's behind that right making that happen you know, those are the kids that went on, unfortunately, they had to take COBOL and right. you know, <laughs> Fortran and all that. But, see, I, I have a problem with our education has now grabbed the word coding. Right, exactly. And it's I mean, become coding. Right, exactly. New silver bullet. No, but the world's yeah. doing it, too. They, oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, Google's using it, and everyone's using coding, coding, coding. Oh, uh, absolutely. I mean, they have they, they have programming and coding academies. You know, come take our, you know, come pay $30,000 for our coding academy, and, and in 16 short weeks, we'll make you a coder. Yeah. I, I, I think that, that we're, we're, we're missing some steps. Oh, yeah. I, I agree. And as reading the standards, they're missing some steps.
You know, I, I think that's that's something that's just concerning me. I think it's I, the classic case of education. The, the individuals who are pushing an agenda don't necessarily have a firm technical grasp of what exactly they're pushing. They hear from those that they trust that it's like, okay, this is a great idea, and it may be. But there's this, whenever it goes from grassroots up to top level and then back down again, there's this, it misses all these intermediate pieces of information <laughs> until it becomes, this is the thing to do, and then nobody has any idea how to do it because the people enforcing it from the yeah. top down have no idea. Uh, well, and, and, and I think part of the push is, um, especially in Arkansas, education is it, it kind of goes back to what you were saying you know that that small percentage and essentially they're going to cast this wide net and they're going to force all seventh and eighth graders to at least be exposed to coding so right. they can grab the few fish who say right that was pretty cool that was awesome right exactly now meanwhile how many have you turned off because it's like man that was way beyond me yes, i'm right. never going to be a car uh, i'm right. terrible at this i suck at coding i'm yes, never going to touch it know, again right well, and that brings into play the one thing that i hear from most of the guys in the industry is the breakdown in an actual environment of coding of building an app of building a saas of building software as a service is that you have the managers you have the gooey guys and girls, mm -hmm. and there's this loss of breakdown between right, exactly. getting right. it to the developers, getting it to the coders mm. to build it. And, and to me, we're missing this opportunity because there are, you, I, in, in the, the, the show notes, I have to say, David put this in. It's like, do we want to keep doing line by line coding or do we want a more modern graphical interface? Well, there's what's really interesting is Just there's some the concept, there's yeah. some wonderful concept graphical interfaces out yes. there. Oh yeah. That you know you can wireframe up a software as a service or an app or anything, and get your wireframe built so that you have a concept of what you wanted, and then you can take it to the coders, or the manager can take it to the coders, or the client. And then work through it. So there's so many areas. So those kids that go, I hate the line by line coding. Right. right. But guess what? For the near future, seeable future, we're going to have line by line coders. It's always right. going to oh, happen. Exactly. Well, yeah. Never going to stop. But that is a very finite number of people. That is not everyone. Right. And I, I'm I'm tired of reading articles where they go, well, so and so, the fashion designer, made her own app. No, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, but there's a there's a model out there, and, and she's doing some great work, and she's doing coding and all this kind of stuff, and supposedly she coded her own app. Great. And she's a supermodel, and she does all this stuff, and she has a degree from Harvard. I'm sorry, I don't know who it is. And, but my daughters are like, you know, she coded her own app. And I was like, cool. You want a book on a, on a Ruby? No. Why would I want to do that? Well, she coded her app. She probably coded it in Ruby. Or, you know, there's, there's you know, we'll, we'll find it. No, I don't want to do that, Dad. But I would like to design my own app. Aha. Right. Right. Yeah, right. So Greg's right. We're going to lose a lot of kids who go, I don't want to do this. Right. Mm -hmm. We should. Then at that point, it should be, well, great. The classroom over here is how to wireframe out so that and how to talk the language. Because you still need to know the language. Right. You know, there's a language to talk to coders. Right. Listen, uh, the input for this field needs to be, you know, I mean, right. it, it sure. is. And our kids don't even know that. Right. Well, that's what today. Uh, today, well, a vendor today told me that he had inputted. Inputted. inputted? Yeah, that's right. That was in the email. Inputted. Yeah. You know. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, 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 we're missing this beautiful piece in between there. I'm sorry, I interrupted you, but you. Well, no, I was interrupting you. Well, but yeah. everybody I, I, interrupt I, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think that's the interesting thing that's going to happen is is that that's something I didn't see in those standards. I didn't see where it's going to jump straight into coding. Coding what? Right. Why? Mm -hmm. Everything has a what, when, why, where, mm -hmm. who. You know, just to sit down and code Jeff in there so that it puts Jeff across the screen 50 times is useless to me. I made the I made the turtle move from square one to square two. Okay, let's talk about why we wanted the turtle to move to square one, square right. two. Right. Well, where would we use that in relation to building this? Why would we want this to happen sure. in here? That uh, they're missing the concept of you know. The execution. There's the beautiful part of, liter of literature when you study literature is that you read Shakespeare and then you talk about why is this sentence structured this way? And mm -hmm. then you say, why did he write it this way? Right. Hey, well, Greg, what does that mean to you? I, I will say that in, in those coding standards, it does talk about some of the concepts behind it. For example, um, they start out with students 
understanding a what an algorithm is right. and then using real world ag algorithms before even touching the computer one of the most common of course tying your shoes making a peanut butter sandwich you know those right, kinds exactly. of things right sure. what are the steps involved um last summer i did a couple of workshops with teachers and i will tell you that none of the teachers who took the workshop by their own admission uh had any clue what coding was what right. it did i mean they had an idea of what it did but right, exactly. you know they, they never touched it before had no idea and i started them with some very simple you know we went to code.org and we did the you know the fun little um oh, oh hour of code type things right. you know where they, they they did very simple you know here's the star wars hour of code or here's right. the frozen hour of code and they made the funky little designs and we use the drag and drop interface right. and you know it's it's essentially scratch built or close right. to scratch uh -huh. you know they drag it they drop it but what i was doing at that very beginning and that's where i started them because they knew they had the idea okay we're going we need to draw 12 triangles all right well how now how do i do that with uh, how would i do that in code all right don't worry about the code how here are certain commands that you right. can just drag and drop and just put into place the logic and level. Don't, you know, exactly ignore the syntax. what's the logic what's behind the logic? it exactly and then one and then and then throughout the day we built up using different uh applications um at one point i had them doing code combat uh, which is a which is an RPG dungeon style game where you are coding the player and what happens to the player and you know all that kind of stuff and so I took them through a couple of levels of that and and let them play with it and let them kind of figure it out and then ultimately we got into the here is the line code and at different places along the way behind every graphical coding interface you can still flip over to the code button and see the code. And I would say, this is the code behind what you just dragged and dropped. And they would go, so we would have had to type all that? Yeah, you would have had to type all that to do this. Well, this is way easier. And it still does the same thing. Exactly. And so I think along what you were saying, you get to that. I think if, if the problem, the big problem I have with the Arkansas standards for coding is that it specifically says it must be text-based coding. It's got uh, to be text-based. Like, you know, we, like, we're going to use teach. Notepad, and that's all we're using. Right, you know, right. you, that's it. You know, why? No why? You know, why can't they learn those general concepts? Get the logic down. Understand what these processes the syntax are. Syntax is going to vary from from. I mean, exactly. Like whenever I took Introduction to Programming in college, I took it as C plus plus. Do you know how much C++ I've written since I left college? <laughs> the most. Right, yeah. But do you know how much co programming I've done since I left college? I've done a bunch. Right. So, you know, the logic generally doesn't change. You've got if then, you've got loops, you know, basic control structure. It doesn't change a whole lot. Right. But yes, this idea of, of pushing the syntax, it's like teaching keyboarding. Like, you have to do, okay, you got to do the home row and got to have your fingers here. It doesn't matter if you can type faster or you can type just as well if you're just, you know, floating around the keyboard and, you, you know, but no, you got to be home row, you got to be touch typing, nothing else. So, yeah, and, and that, you know, since we're taking that row, I, I still can't wrap my brain around that very thing. I mean, yeah. seriously, why are we still teaching home row keyboarding? Who gives a crud? <laughs> yeah, in the old days when you jammed up the typewriter and we had to do the home row with the QWERTY, okay, yeah, I get it. You don't have to do that anymore. You know, there are lots of people who can type very, very quickly looking at the keys. Right. Yeah. You know, or using their, you know, <laughs> six of their ten fingers. Right. And can whip yeah. out whatever you need them to do, whether it's, uh, you know, a, a 30 page report right. or whether it's 900 lines we're of code. Focused, or, we're focused you know, too much on the on what we're doing and not the end goal. Exactly. Right. Yeah. The steps and, instead and it's of actually like where harming, we're going. It's actually harming the people. Oh, yeah. My daughter said the other night she was sitting at the bar in the kitchen typing on her laptop and she went, Dad, I just can't type like this. Like no, they gosh, want to, the it hurts thing? my hand and I went, yes. You don't have to type like that here. <laughs> what? But that's what they, and I was like, no, you can type any, if you want to use two fingers. I know well, the, our former superintendent, he can type as fast as anyone with two fingers. Two fingers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's just all over the thing. Right. And I was like, you know, you don't, but, but there's that whole kicker is that's the same thing that happened to me in 19, when I was <laughs> in the Vax lab coding. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
And I, I would change the syntax. I could get it to do things I wanted it to do. And it would make them angry at me. Yeah. You didn't follow the exact steps. How and dare you? And and that's what it was like even at the university level. Is you, you didn't follow these steps. Right. But it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. So, you know, I tried this and I tried this. And finally, I got it to do this. Well, but we'll talk about that seven chapters later. You can't do this now. You're right, right, exactly. You can't do that yet. Right. right. Why can't I do that yet? I'm already doing that yet. Right. <laughs> and, and, and there was the crazy part. I hated to indent. No. Yeah. It, there was really no reason to indent. It just made it when it – there's the funny part. In those days, you turned in all your programming by printing it out on long yes. scroll sheets. Yes. <laughs> Yes. So that it could be graded that right. way. Yes. 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 I was I was a member of that particular. So you, era. we grew up we grew up during that era where you we went you went over mm -hmm. to the giant line printer and it printed out you know yes. three hundred pages this then you that's what you turned in and they literally went through it with a red pen. Yes. And if it wasn't indented correctly, then it wasn't right. Well, no, that program runs beautifully. It does yeah. exactly what you want it to do, but it's not indented. That's just the way you want it. That's not the way Jeff wants it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's interesting. But that is – nowadays I understand and I, I, I go along with the common understanding. Well, I sent you guys one the other day about some Ebonics that was shown up in a, in the comment section of a, a, a uh, piece of code oh, from yes. one of our exactly. friends. Yes. <laughs> there is yes. definitely – there's a middle ground. There's, there, there's extremes on either end. There's like, okay, you didn't – you didn't use four spaces instead of a tab despite the fact that it goes either way. Right. And then there's like, I can't – read this it may run but i can't read well, that's this. right well and and i would tell you you know in the programming classes that i i took and absolutely loathed i, I hated programming um <laughs> that was that was drilled into my head the the indentation and comments you know the and that's what what the way the professors who drilled it into my head explained it was that's not for you and it's not for the computer it's for the next person who comes in when you're no longer there and they need to decipher your code right. sure and i understand and i understand that right. but i agree with you you know okay that's ultimately, all well and good right, but exactly. ultimately it doesn't matter if i indent or not right to that end it doesn't matter if i indent one space, two space, twelve spaces. Right. Who cares? Uh, you know, but you know, I actually used eh. to get in trouble a lot, and I actually got in trouble here with one of my other, a former colleague that I would comment too much, <laughs> too many comments. But you know, those comments were there because when I went back, there, you know, right. Mm -hmm. When I moved from basic, when we, you know, our early scripts went from basic to something a little more hefty, mm -hmm. you know. I wanted more comments because, you know, we're doing some more hefty stuff here. Right, exactly. What does this line actually do? Well, right. And, and now I actually – it just just me. In, in comments, I like to make sure if I'm going to put a comment in, if I stole it from somewhere, I don't <laughs> have to put the web link in there. Yeah. Because right. someone else might want to go and read that article sure. and find out what was happening. But anyway. Oh, well, that's – well, just, uh, you know, along the same lines, uh, back in 1990, you know, I, we, I, I was asked to see if I could come up with – a, a program that would allow us to track professional development. Now, this is before the whole shoebox ESC works thing. Um, and so I taught myself ASP, and that, you know, there were several sites where that's exactly what you would do. You would go find the code that kind of sort of did what you wanted, and then you would modify it so that it worked in you know your environment. And I commented a lot in those scenarios when I was working on that programming, Contrary to what my professors were saying, it wasn't for me. It was for me because when I went back a month later or sometimes two days later, right. I couldn't remember what that was doing. Right. I had to comment for me. I was right. like, this sorts and, you know, arranges on the screen. I'm, oh, yeah, that's okay, okay. Yeah. You know. You know, I think so, it's – but you know, back to the whole coding line by line thing. I, I think there is a lot more kids we could reach that love the intricacy of coding. Mm-hmm. They don't know that they do that yet, but they right, do. Right. That's also some of the same kids that draw amazing artwork, the very detailed stuff on their notebooks mm -hmm. and on their hands and on pages of books. A lot and of the times desks. those the desks. Well, they, and they're they, the they, kids who are pulling apart the in when we were kids, you know, taking apart the dual deck cassette player because I yeah. want to figure out how all the pieces and parts work. You know, work I really and, think most know. of the coders I think coders are artists. I think the kids that love to that love word games, that love yeah. mathematical games. Sure. Um, that the ones that you always see reading a book, all the kids that have gone through when I was teaching band, some of my favorite kids, 
Um, I had a kid that played in the pit and percussion, and he was an avid, I was a voracious reader. He would read literally two to three books a day. He was, wow. You saw him as a voracious reader. And he now codes for, um, they're the guys that make, uh, that make uh, 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 not Halo, but uh, Call of Duty. Ah. He works for them now. Activision? He no. knew nothing about coding when he was in school. When he got to college, it was he took a few classes. Yeah. And he was such a he loved the voraciousness of lines and lines and mm-hmm. lines and lines of code. Sure. And you know, I think we're missing a lot of kids. I do believe we are missing a lot of kids that do that. And so I think the line by line coding has a has a place for those kids. But like I said, I do believe that starting them off with the logic and mm-hmm. you know yeah. that's Synt- the big deal. Let the syntax come in if they show interest in the logic level. Right. right. I think I think we've made the mistake in teaching programming that education has made a mistake in general, where it's like, this is a good thing, let's put it on everybody. You yes. know? When yes. it's like, okay, when am I going to use okay, history, great. You know, I need to have a basic understanding of how this country started, what we're all here, and sort of this is the general idea of <laughs> my country. This is the general idea of the world. This is what's happened so far. These are the mistakes to avoid. Do I need to know the specific dates and times when such and such exactly. empire came right. to power and you know the the detailed history? No. Why do I need to know all this? This is wasting my time. Right. Do I need to know mathematics over you know basic algebra? I've never used anything over basic algebra. Yeah. You know, like super basic. Like okay, that's <laughs> one variable there. Okay, great. That's <laughs> algebra. Okay. You know, I heard a cheesy joke today that said maybe maybe math teachers are actually pirates and they want you to find X so they can find the treasure. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's interesting i believe every great coder has to have a handler and when i say that and i'm if you look back in the history of great coders that were out there steve jobs and wozniak who was the better coder there wozniak wozniak now steve jobs understood how to talk to the Woz. Mm-hmm. and he understood how to take his ideas and present them to Woz right and help Woz work through the ideas of what he wanted graphically right yeah, I, I believe that it, and not that they all have to have it, but I believe that that handlers are made and friendships are made in that area, and and we have this opportunity now, at a very young age, for people to meet. You know, I had great friends in the Vax Lab that were way better coders than I was, but I could help them visualize and understand what we were trying to pull out. Sure. Sure. You know, I was the guy that was, you know, I feel like I work with a lot of some really yeah. smart people well because I can I know just enough to be dangerous but help get the idea in there. The say, interim person. And, the and one have that an bridges idea the gap. Yeah, right. and go, this yeah. is what we need to do. Let's do this. You know, mm-hmm. this is – but I, I believe there's so many avenues with this now that we're adding this into it that if schools will take it that extra level and go, you know, we can also build managers and developers. Right. Not just coders. We can start building and we can have kids leaving school with a group of friends and coworkers that don't need to go into post-secondary. Right. They can move into the thing and go. Let's mm-hmm. just do this. We right. can, we can code this to run an eggplant to you know, whatever is going to happen with machine language. We love it, and you know what we need to do. And David likes to build it, so right. he's going to build the hydraulic machines. You're going to create the process, and I'm you know, right. you're, and I'm going to write the code that's going to make sure that it grabs the egg at certain pressure and drops it into yeah. the thing. I mean, I think I think that's really the ge- the general sin of education is the fact that we treat we we never take anything all the way down to application, at least not, or we don't tie it to it. Now, obviously, we've got a limited amount of time that we can teach kids. Sure. But so often, we never even touch on the concept of, okay, this is where this is actually applied in the yes. real world. Yes. It's just, you know, rote memorization and, like, this is what I have to do because I was told to do it. Right, and I, exactly. Therefore, I don't really care about it. Right. I just need to pass the test. Yeah, I think that's what's interesting is most of the machine-level coders that I know that write hard-level stuff, are dying off. Yeah. There's not many coming back in there. And most of the ones that I know that are really good are in their 50s, 60s, 70s. Yeah. The guys that can take a five ton piece of steel and fly it down a conveyor belt and have a plasma cutter cut it perfectly within, you know, point point zero 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 nine millimeters of where it's supposed to be done, you know, at a hairline thing, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. Or grab twelve eggs and create the pressure sensitive programming that those that it's going to use this PSI to suck those eggs into a, into right. a grabber right. and drop them. And I mean, that's exactly right. We don't take kids the opportunity to go when they see this stuff and go, 
it's a chicken plant, but what makes all this run? Well, it's right. not the people cutting the chickens off. It, there's somebody. Mm. It, it's really crazy. PLC. It's usually, yeah, it's usually one person. Mm. Yeah. And that one person is probably could be tied to how many plants. Mm -hmm. And it's probably like I would <clears throat> kill for someone to help me take on the responsibility. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, I, I mean, I knew a, a, a coder, you know him too, that would leave here and went to Boston once to fix all their water problems mm -hmm. in the city of Boston. Yeah. You know, and came back here and would, you know, could take a five-ton piece of steel and fly it down a thing and sure. stop it and That's cut exactly. it with plastic. You know, and it was all amazing to me. I was like, you know, they're writing the code for this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, we, I agree with Greg. We're really not, uh, we're not well, taking them. And maybe this will. But I think, but that. I think, I, I think several districts, I won't even, I won't say many by any stretch, but, but I think there are districts that are across the country um, that are starting to look at the application side. Mm. And, and, you know, you start to get into things like that project-based learning. You, you get into things like the mastery-based yeah. advancement. You know, it doesn't matter that you're 12. If you've right. got this mastered, guess what? You can keep going. Right, you can exactly. keep learning. You know, you, uh, you don't have to stay in this room in this chair because you are 12. Right. It's ludicrous. Yes, right? it is. It's <laughs> absolutely ludicrous. And 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 so that is slowly coming about. Yeah. The and this goes back to one of the original things we talked about. You know, in some ways, education dumps things left and right. We're going to try this for two years. Nope, we're going to do. And right. then we have other things like this Hang big. On Ever. Massive, crazy, you know, assembly rows and line, columns way assembly of line, uh, assembly line <laughs> students, you know, and, and it's it's taking some time mm. to change that machine. Right. But in certain places, they're changing happen. that machine. And I think know? the I think the risk we, we run there is we have those innovators that yeah, they're doing this, that they're going, right. you know, project based learning and all this sort of great stuff. But so often in education, we get into this photocopy mentality. It's like, oh, look, that raised yes. test scores. Right. And yes. then you take the surface level stuff and you never realize why it was why done. And was you, don't, it. you don't sell it all the way down yes. to the bottom at, at your district or whatever. Right. And you just clone it on the outside. And that looks about the same. And then it all falls apart. And you yes. wonder why. And we move on exactly. to the next thing. Exactly. Because you never get down to the core of, okay, this is why it was done. This is Or this is how, this is how you take what they were doing and you can't carbon copy right. it but we can we can copy some of this and but we're going to have to right. adjust this for our environment right you know and, and we see that a lot like mm. you said you know you, especially when it comes to you have a district that's got 400 total students who's doing something and it's working crazily well right and so another district who's got 4,000 students tries to do the exact same thing but we'll apart. just scale it up and yeah, and the whole thing falls off the rails. It's like, well, no, that it doesn't work that way. You right. can't, you know. None of this works that way. Right, exactly. You know, so, exactly. So the anywho, I, I guess we've pretty much beat that to death. Well, sorry about that. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, hey, well, uh, one more thing on the show notes, and we'll talk about it. We, we I was going to jump out to some music, but you know, we've got uh, we got just enough minutes, time. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll knock this sucker out. Uh, I had written down on here Apple Core order to modify. Oh work yeah, for the yes, yes. yes. Um, and I think I pretty much that's pretty much sums up what they want them to do is modify the firmware. Yeah, give them the, they, so they want a they special can, build. You know, they can flash that. That's one of those tricky areas, though. You know, you have these two people who went in and just you know, obliterated fifteen people. Right. That we know. Well, we don't know, but there's a pretty good chance that there's information on the phones mm -hmm. that would provide some insight, perhaps provide contacts to other people who may be planning similar things and they can't get to it because the phones are locked right. and so you have that weird you know do you do you of, open it up right. so that you know so that we can get that information but right. at the expense of everybody else's you know privacy. security and privacy or do you leave it locked and say yep sorry that kind of stuff happens we're not you know we don't have access to it and we're not going to go down that road well let, right. let's take a look Man. back to jay Hoover. And illegal wiretaps. Yeah. It's right behind me. <laughs> illegal right. wiretaps by right. the FBI. And, and the fact that they did run massive phone tapping, underground recording. Right. You know, our country forgets that. Yeah. And they forget that that you know that happens. Not the people that are not the people like Tim Cook and not the people that are sitting at levels that go, you don't want your government. Right. Being able to get to your, if you have private information, mm -hmm. it's your information. Right. 
And I mean, at, at this point in the history of mankind, you know, they can come into my house and get a court order without me even knowing they're look, looking for, for anything from me right. and take everything I have. If I have a safe with my code on it, with everything in it, they can take that safe and break into it and take any information out of it. Right. Th there is no last bastion of, of personal security. Right. Aside sure. from some, a few technologies. A, yeah. a, a few technologies. I mean, we're at the point now where this is possibly the last bastion of safe. Mm -hmm. I can keep something here that you can't get to. Yeah. And the, the whole question of, see, the, okay, so the discussion with this particular case that the FBI is trying to get them to unlock the phone for the, these, these shooters, that's one application of this whole, you know, decryptability and that sort of thing. Then you've got the whole basic broad discussion that's going on concerning encryption where, okay, backdoor encryption into anything, you know, like basically any device that any major company produces has to have a backdoor, a secret key, a whatever term you want to give it, where the government can get access to the device if they have a court order and, you know, all the approval and that sort of thing. Well, you know, drawing it back to terrorism, it's like, okay, well, we need to be able to track terrorists and that sort of thing. Well, do you think the terrorists are going to use the stock apps that come from right. the stock companies? Right. That, you know, right. there, are, there are open source projects that are not subject to these sorts of sanctions and controls where it's like, okay, this is open source. It's, what do they call it? Um, jurisdictionally flexible, I think is the official term, <laughs> where it has multiple owners so that at any given time, oh, now I'm the owner of the project, now it's in Van Lichtenstein, where right. the privacy right. laws are this way, and you right. can't actually shut down the project or, you know, any sort of that sort of thing. So this whole idea, it's it's kind of, it really comes it's sort of analogous to gun laws almost, where, okay, yeah, you could outlaw handguns, but it'll take most of the guns away from the people that would use them legally, and the ones that had them illegally are probably not going to give them, them up. Illegally. Exactly, they're yeah. gonna exactly. So yeah, it, we're, we're in that weird. It's it's the same sort of idea. There's the sad part about the true freedom of freedom, of democracy, of a utopia that exists. It can never really exist. It will always have flaws. Oh, sure. People flaw. abuse the system. Mm -hmm. and, and the flaw is, you know, to keep a certain order is actually an individual responsibility. responsibility. Mm -hmm. it, it, and it cannot, if the individual chooses not to keep that order, then there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, exactly. Except after the fact. It's like, okay, right. now we kill you or yeah. imprison you or whatever. And, and you know, right. you have but even to that extent, you know, it, even when it comes to that, that may not even necessarily be the actual solution. Right. In that, again, you know, we have a device that is all locked up. They're dead. They killed themselves or were killed yeah, or however exactly. that works, right. right? Okay. But all the stuff, potentially, that right. they had was in their phone and right. it's locked up. So, right. yeah, you got rid of the person who was, you know, acting individually. Right. But you didn't cut off the But you state. didn't, yeah. You know, you, you really hadn't accomplished anything. Right. But but now, in this case, it's interesting. The FBI has already said that they're not tied to any radical group. They radicalized themselves. Right, exactly. This was this was just the two of them on their own. So now the question is, then why do you really right, need Right, then the why phone? do you even need it? I mean, at this point. It's a very established think, that, yeah. I think this is the opportunity, possibly, for the FBI to say, you know, this is this is where mm -hmm. they establish the this is this is the legal precedent. And, right. and yes. you have to admit, there are probably a, a hundred times that we know nothing about that Homeland Security, the FBI, have caught terrorists. Sure. Mm -hmm. And they have phones that they cannot get into mm -hmm. right. because they're going. You know, well, oh, that was the tenth time it just erased itself. <laughs> Everything's gone. I'm sorry that that's the way it goes. But, you know, that's the same way it's going to listen. We need you to make this thing that takes ash once they burn a paper and it reconstitutes it back into paper with ink on it. <laughs> right, right. Paper companies. You we're cannot need you to make burnable, right. burnable paper. paper. That's right. <laughs> we need to make you make ink that does not. Yeah, I mean. Exactly. We're, we're getting, right. That's, all paper that's, will be made of asbestos from here on yeah. out. Cannot be burned. <laughs> so, you know, and it, but, you know, there's the interesting thing that comes to play is that the, also the thing that happens is that. If they were to create such a back door, then the people that were going to do that, then there would be a new way to instantaneously wipe this phone. Right. Right. Or to use an application on that has its own encryption. Right. So that, at that point, the fact that you can get into the phone is pointless. Yeah. Right. So, yes. Or, you know, it's just a drop it into the garbage. Well, you know, exactly. I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, yeah. 
I mean, you know, I can make it where you can't get into this phone. If right. That's what you yeah, as long as I have right. a tiny, the tiniest amount of hint that, okay, it's coming, dump it. Throw it in the microwave. Right. Do, yeah. You know, right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Jar acid. Boom. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, but yeah, I, I think it's interesting that Tim Cook and Apple are standing up to it. And I'm glad they are because I believe that it would, it, Apple, Apple in their own right, knowing that they don't have a back door and they don't have the ability to get into it as as a company, has mm-hmm. stood up for exactly what they said they were going to. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. They have. I mean, that's what. We, yes, yes. As institutionally owned devices, we can call and they will wipe the codes off just when we reset them. Right, right. Yeah, not for us to get into it because the kid is, you know. Right, exactly. All the data, the all the data, right. on it's gone. Yeah. So, I mean, that's interesting. Well, and and to that end, um, is it actually gone? I mean that's my you know that that's one of the things that I, I flash you know. memory it's very close to gone because it's really really difficult to recover from yeah. flash memory. Um, there is the potential it's it's actually you know hard drives of course the way hard drives work if you erased something it's or top. moved it to the <laughs> moved it to the to the recycle bin or whatever right, it's, it's not immediately overwritten. But with flash memory because of garbage collection what happens is as soon as you erase it the operating system talks to the flash memory and says, okay, that's freed up. And then because of the way flash memory worked, it can be overwritten much more quickly because mm-hmm. it's not linearly moving from, okay, from this part of the flash chip to the end of the flash chip. Right. So it can actually be erased very, very quickly. On the flip side, it's also possible that it may persist longer. Sure. But recovery is so much more difficult because it's much less standardized. There are all sorts of companies that have come along and they've, they're very specialized in trying to extract these chips, and they've got their own sockets that they have to re-solder the chip right. to the to the adapter plate, and then try to recover it that way. <laughs> it's recovery from flash memory is that's really not true. In real genius, they got on the jet plane, <laughs> <laughs> had the laser on it, and he took the EEPROMs off and he put them in and he reprogrammed them with the EEPROM reader. Oh. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry, that was 1982. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen that, Val Kilmer, real genius, highly recommend it. <laughs> it's a wonderful movie. Um, hey, you know, uh, it's about time Is to wrap up. Is that the one that created the woman? The woman. No, that's uh, Weird Science. Oh, sorry. Real, real genius, genius was Val Weird Kilmer. Weird Science, all those good stuff. Yeah, real genius was a very neat one. They were trying to create a certain laser, a chemical, oh. a chemical laser. And yeah, I, I saw the one where they created Kelly LeBrock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, real, very little real science in that one. Hence no. the name, weird science. <laughs> so, um, oh. hey, cool. Let's. Uh, hey, thanks for listening. Yeah, you're listening to radio.edutechguys.com. It's been a long day, a fun day. Um, uh, we're going to shut this bad boy down. and Shut her down. If you're listening to us on Periscope, give me some hearts. Thanks a million. Listen to our show, radio.edutechguys.com. Visit the website, www.edutechguys.com. Follow us on Twitter, at edutechguys.com. Catch us at a conference near you. If you'd like to be on the show and you're on Twitter, drop us a line from the website, www.edutechguys.com. Hey, uh, it's been a good time. I'm Jeff Madlock. I'm David Henderson. And I'm Greg Moore. And we'll talk to you next time. You've been listening to EduTech Guys Radio, radio radio.edutechguys.com. The opinions expressed on this site, this program, are those of participants are not intended to and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any specific educational entity, sponsor, company, state, or government agency.